<laughs> Hold on, fixing everything. What is so funny? <laughs> so the way I have my screen region set up, like when I first start the meeting, I take up the entire screen. <laughs> so it made it the screen regions were like one of you guys was my eye, the other one was my other <laughs> eye, and the other the third one's my mouth. So I was just going <laughs> like the screen. Whenever I answer the phone, I'm like, hello. What pissed you off? It's a great argument to have. I love my mom, but I think she's half crazy for doing that. How dare you? Do you um, work with your girlfriend, Mark? Or your wife, Mark? I keep them separated. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I call people, they don't answer the phone, I'm like, f*** them. Wrong number, click. <laughs> well, he's not that smart. And it, sometimes he sounds like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Go. But therefore, you're an ass, and I don't want to talk to you anymore. Yeah, but what do we know? All right, guys. What's going on? What's going on? It's what do we know, and guess what? Guess what? 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 <laughs> Today marks our one-year anniversary of doing Yay! the show. One year. We did it. We've done it. We did it. Did it. We didn't get canceled. We did. Yeah, no, <laughs> nobody came and canceled us. It's amazing. It's but the yeah, beauty of the interwebs. Yeah, this is technically episode number 52. Uh, though I don't remember. The other ones, we because it's weekly, 1 through 52. And then the ones in the middle, we call them like point something or other. So we've had mm -hmm. more than 52 episodes. But it's been a one year from this week of when our first podcast went out. Uh, yeah, that's so pretty awesome. crazy. Patting myself it doesn't on the back. feel like a year. And do you guys want uh, to know if that's why I'm dressed up today to celebrate one year? Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, it's just because I look fucking amazing. So, anyways, go on. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. Um, so maybe our uh, our viewers don't know, but I couldn't make it exactly on the anniversary date. I don't think uh, on the Saturday or Sunday because I was actually away. And uh, I, <laughs> I was away because my wife and I, we went camping for one day. To Squirrel Cave. Then... To Squirrel Cave, right? No, not to Squirrel Cave. Cave. <laughs> so, my, so to give background into this, we were supposed to record this episode a few days ago. And Mike <clears throat> and I were taking bets on where Mark actually was. I had <laughs> dibs on Squirrel Cave. I was Mongoose Peninsula. Oh, I would say that Mike's closer. Oh, <laughs> we, we went up to uh, up north in, in Japan and to the uh, Sea of Japan, and I was we were just going to go with like to the beach for one day, but it ended up being like a four day camping trip. So uh, what happened was we um, we found this great camping spot. It ended up being free. Uh, we met up some Japanese people, and they were using. Um, Pole spears, basically, you know, Hawaiian spear, uh, Hawaiian slings, to catch fish. So I like I spent like the whole day in the water, just every day, just swimming and trying to catch fish to eat for dinner. And usually the fish were around the size that I got, <laughs> like three of them. But I would spend like six or eight hours just swimming and trying to catch fish, which was really awesome. But there's only one side effect is after you're in the water for so long, you start to chafe, right? And I like like I was really chafing around like my groin area. The really bad. And you know, it tells you like the relationship I have with my wife, because I was like complaining to my wife, like, I'm really chafed, right? Like in my ball sack area. And my <laughs> wife, without even like laughing, she's like, Oh, what oh, uh, do you know where the Vaseline is? You could like, you know, Vaseline your balls right there. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> you'd be good to go. So what I'm understanding out of this story is you were supposed to go camping for one day. You yeah. met crazy Japanese people with spears on sticks <clears throat> that they yeah. were shooting fish with and stayed out with these Japanese people for so long catching fish that your groin chafed. <laughs> so therefore, you stayed for four more days. Well, I mean, it, probably it, couldn't it walk like out two days before it started to really chase. But yes, I think that was the gods telling you, like, you're missing the show, Mark. You, uh, this is your punishment, punishment for for missing the show. 
Wow, that's sort of a harsh punishment. Hey, I'm not the gods. I, I, I didn't make the punishment. I'm just telling you what happened. They just got our back. You it's probably because I killed, like, the baby fish. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, like, you have the um, snorkel and the mask on, right? But when you go swimming underwater, all the fish, like, it sort of magnifies what you see. So I'm always, like, going to kill a fish. And I'm thinking, like, I'm going to get a fish about this size. And I spear it. And I, I'm like, yeah, I'm really a man. Then I, like, put the fish <laughs> above water and I look at it. And it's just like a little... You know, guppy. I'm like, I don't even know if I should take it in. Like, I'm <laughs> too embarrassed that I killed something so small. Mark's maybe like, I should, maybe like, I should use the bait for the bigger fish. <laughs> he, he was working for uh, the fish stick factory. <laughs> he was just yeah. getting the little ones for them, getting them all ready. <laughs> oh. yeah. Well, so, at least you had a good time. That sounds fun. Yeah. Except for the chafing part, obviously. Yeah. So. Not so much. Uh, is it still chafed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty pretty much. Is the Vaseline actually helping? It helps a little bit. I mean, only really at the very beginning. It's not so bad now, but uh, it does. Well, I think I'm going to go back to the beach, uh, like later today. So I can't go. I can't. I'll probably be chafing like really quickly again next. <laughs> so wait, you so you came back to go to work and said you're going back. Yeah, so I only have to, I had to come back to help uh, these students with their speech contest that they have today. And uh, afterwards, I'm just going to go back to the beach for another four or five days. So your wife's just still chilling out there? Waiting no, for my, wife's, come back? my wife came with me. So you guys are just... We're, we're, we're both going back, yes. Took a day break and then you're heading back. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of chafing... <laughs> I've never tried. I've never tried Vaseline before. You've got me kind of intrigued. I've never tried Vaseline before. I've used baby powder when I chafe. Yeah. I was going to say I usually use the uh, medicated powder. Personally, I, I think good stuff. I think it's just so it helps with the rubbing, so it's not like skin on. <laughs> oh no, I can I can see how it would be helpful. I just I guess I never really thought about that. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of funny because let's put the, this into context. I don't. I would never masturbate with baby powder. But somehow that helps the chafing, and I never thought about using Vaseline on something that specifically is all about rubbing together. Like, maybe I'm a I, think, I don't know. It's... I think one. I was going to say, wouldn't, ba yeah, wouldn't baby powder like give you too much grip? Well, you. But then, why would baby? Why does baby powder work when you're chafing? Right, when you put it on a baby, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's because it dries the skin, so like you don't have. I don't know something about wet skin causes chafing. I guess it does stop the sweat from really soaking Wetting through. Friction and... skin, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, going by this logic, actually, probably like vegetable oil or motor oil. You could probably use any of those. <laughs> Some good old <laughs> WD forty. They don't, they don't recommend that. <laughs> yes. Believe it or not. <laughs> I mean, maybe it just wasn't the right blend of motor oil. Maybe some, you know, WD-30 or something might be what you need to, uh, or 5W-30 is what you need instead right. of 5W-40. Like. I have a viscosity. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, you got to debate whether it's the winter or the summer. The weather temperatures. And, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> what goes on down there. It's, I mean, hey. it's, it makes sense to me. This show got off the rails really fast. <laughs> so, I got a question for both of you guys. Okay. Do you I'm guys ready. do you guys like uh, let's say video games or just like games in general? It doesn't have to be video game related. Like, do you guys like puzzle games? Not puzzles. Yeah. Not like putting together a puzzle, but having a game where the object is to solve a puzzle of some type. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say something. I don't think I've played one like that in a long time that I recall. Like, you mean like like a, a Tomb Raider or something like that where you have to like, go around the room and press this button correctly or in the sequence before the room unlocks? Right. Like you press this lever and it opens up this platform over here that you then have to go through to go press the next lever that opens up something else down below. Like puzzle games like that. You know, not exactly like that, but sort of like that. Yeah, sometimes. So if they're done, right? So what would you think if you purchased a puzzle game that said it was the hardest puzzle game ever made? Would you feel like 
up for the challenge? Would you feel a little like? I would feel like it would hurt my brain. It depends on what kind of puzzle kind of puzzle game. Well, that's the beauty, that's the beauty of this particular game that I'm talking about. They don't even tell you that part of the the difficulty of the puzzle is they don't tell you what to do. You have to right. figure it out from the beginning. Wow. Uh, that, that would probably be too hard for me. <laughs> so if you knew that there were eight levels to such game, okay. how long would you spend on level one before seeking advanced help, like looking up a tutorial or something like that in order to... I, you know what? I'm a notorious cheater with those anymore. So, I, when I was younger, I used to love that stuff. But now it's like I have way less free time to focus on that stuff. So generally, if I get stuck somewhere, like in Skyrim or something, like if I'm playing a game like that and I get stuck, I don't have time to mess with it. So I just look it up. <laughs> and I well, mean, that defeats the whole purpose of this game. <laughs> you know? This game is specifically just puzzles. Like at least Skyrim has more to it, right? It's puzzles right. are just a part of it. Well, and what's funny too is when, when you asked if we like puzzle games, I immediately jumped back to like my brain went to an old – like Nintendo Entertainment System, you know, first generation game called Deja Vu. Okay. That was kind of a... Something you saw twice? You kind of... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, it's sort of like you wake up and don't remember who you are, or how you got there, and there's like a dead person next to you or something. You have to figure out what's going on. And, oh, I see. You know, total puzzle game. And I loved that game when I was a kid. Now I don't know if I'd have the patience for it. Cool. Back then, you also didn't know how to look up like things right. because you couldn't at the time. You didn't have that. Yeah. You bought hint books or whatever from the store, and nobody wants to spend. Or called the nine hundred numbers because I always yeah. had nine hundred numbers with game. I wonder how much they made off of those nine hundred. I was gonna lines. say I actually never. I it. It. So, Mark, what about you? If you bought the game for the sole purpose of like, I am going to get through this hardest puzzle game ever. Like, how long would you give level one mm -hmm. until you? finally gave up and said i just don't even know what to do so if i'm up. if it's one of those kind of games where you can leave and come back to it like i'd probably spend a whole week maybe but i mean that's spending maybe like 20 minutes at a time a whole week if i'm just sitting down uh trying to spend my whole day trying to solve it probably like three hours four hours before i i'm ready to throw the computer out with the game <laughs> now if said puzzle game, so I want to know if you think this is ingenious or despicable. Okay. If said puzzle game <clears throat> actually didn't have an answer for the first level. So there's no actual, what do you call it? Uh, there's, no, there's, no solution. there's no solution. No solution to the puzzle. No solution. I would hate that. Would you I feel would really very betrayed and... Yes. I'd feel like it was false advertising. I paid for a puzzle. Would you then be curious about what the next well, seven levels I mean, have to offer? Well, yeah. I mean, like, actually, I would have to say that mm -hmm. maybe part of the puzzle is finding out there is no solution to the puzzle. So then would you be curious to move on to level two? As long as I think there might be a solution to that one, maybe. <laughs> What if I mean, it's, if it's if it's eight levels of no solution, then that yeah. would pretty I was much say, everything we're saying right now just cements my earlier take that I don't have time for this, and it would make my brain hurt. So, so. what what if there was no other levels? <laughs> so this is I, I'm bringing this up because this intrigues me so much. There was a game called The Journey of the Light. That was steam okay. green lighted a few months ago or whatever. It was out. People bought it. They could not figure out for the life of them. It's touted as the hardest puzzle game ever. Uh, the developer was like giving out hints on his website to how to solve like, cause people kept saying like, we, I don't understand like what to do here. I can't figure this out. Can you give us hints? So we started giving was, out hints. Was one of the hints bash your head against no, the wall? One of the, all the hints that he gave out were related to level two. And people are like, but I'm not on level two yet. I can't get to level two. <laughs> so somebody like went through Steam because it was a Steam game. And they looked at the achievements and realized that the only person in the world who had the achievements of beating any of the levels was the creator. Right. Who only had the achievements for beating three levels. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
they then that's pretty tough. They then delved into the game code more and found out that levels two through seven were just copies of level one, and level one was just a, a game, a puzzle without a solution that he put out there and sold this game to hundreds or thousands of people. Oh, wow! Okay. How much did this game cost? I, uh, you could buy it by itself. I think it was four ninety nine, but a lot of people bought it in this major bundle um, that it was included in this bundle of game, which I think they equated that it comes down to like twenty cents or something like that if you bought it in the bundle. But that's also putting into account, account that if you buy a bundle, you don't necessarily buy a bundle because you want every single right. game in the bundle. Mm -hmm. If that was one of the three games I wanted in this bundle, and the bundle cost five dollars, in my mind that game now cost me a dollar fifty or a dollar seventy-five. It didn't cost me twenty cents. I've got a bunch of other games that I'm not going to ever do anything with. Right. Okay. So how about this though? It's sort of like um, Lost. Now people have different opinions about Lost, and I think it was a shitty thing how they ended it. But the producers of Lost said it's not so much about finding the answers; it was about the journey through <laughs> episodes. So if you really like puzzles, and this is something that occupied you for like you know, several <clears throat> hours, then if it's like only a couple dollars, was it worth its money? Because you're in a way entertained for several hours, even if you're mm -hmm. really frustrated with the ending. Well, and what's funny is I always say that about Lost when people talk about how horrible the ending was. The ending was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. I hated it for the couple days after that show ended, I was like, I wasted so much time on this. But then I got to thinking like the first two or three seasons or something, it was a great show. And my yeah. wife and I, you know, in the era of, you know, DVRs, we never watch shows on the day they come out. We made sure we were in front of the TV for that show. And it was something we really enjoyed doing was watching it. Now, again, you know, seasons four, five, whatever, they were not fun to watch. That the, went yeah, down the road. Okay. But... Don't you sometimes feel that those things, though, yes, it's part, partially is the journey, but do you feel cheated as the answer being something that the producers had already said in season one was not going to be the answer? Do you feel cheated because of something like that? Because you're working toward a goal, and you know what the goal is not. It's like right. if you buy this game, you know the goal at the, the end of this game is not the fact that there is no end of this game and you just got cheated and there's actually only one level and you can't even beat it. You didn't well, sit down, like you knew well, that that was the case going in. Just like you knew that it was not purgatory going into Lost. So do you feel well, cheated? Well, okay. First, did the producer of the game actually come out and say, yeah, I was. it was just a whole... No, actually, he, he so, came out so, and tried to lie to everybody. It's it's causing a big thing right now. I'm going to probably change the way that Steam greenlights games and, and such because this guy tried to come out and say it was a compiling error and a mistake and he was going to correct it. And then all of a sudden, he disappeared off the face of the earth and deleted all accounts and traces of himself. And like, okay, it, so it, it, was just, it turned out to be just this major scam. Um, it's what it, I guess, looks like. But nobody's 100% certain because he hasn't come out and said this is a major scam. So nobody would know 100% except this guy. But yeah, it's pretty likely a scam. Which I will admit, I think is a shitty thing to do. But I'm shocked as hell that somebody pulled that off or even thought, I'm going to put this game out there and see if anybody notices. <laughs> now, ironically, the hardest puzzle in the world is finding the guy. Yes, that is true. Ooh, maybe that was his plan all along. Could be. Like, you, you oh, get to him, God. and he's sitting there oh. with, like, a treasure chest of gold, and he's like, you won. <laughs> but then you find out the gold's actually was money from your bank account in the first place that he had just stolen <laughs> from you. And like... Well, I mean, well, when we find out that maybe, like, it's not even the game itself that's the first puzzle. Maybe the first puzzle was the cover art to the game, like... It, or something else like that. The virus that installed on your computer when you downloaded oh. the game and no, took no, your like, bank account information. Like, you start the game, right? And it comes with, like, let's say the start screen. But there's actually a clue in the start screen that takes you to a different website. And the rest of the the code is has nothing to do with the rest of the game. So once you find out whatever the secret is, then you actually start the real game. There might actually be, like, let's say something else to the game besides the game itself 
You know what I'm saying? And, and I hear you. That Ooh. would be, ex- I'd be extremely entertained if this thing played out to be that this guy was trying to hide back, even though all these people think he's a liar and a cheat right now. But it turns out he was just waiting for somebody to find it so that when somebody right. does, everybody's like, oh my God, this man's a genius. Like, that was amazing. Because right. that's what it would do. It would be a whole different spin on the way that any game has ever gone before. I'm sure that that's not the case. However, if it was, it'd be amazing. Right. Oh, well, I mean, um, it's I like the Cards that... Against Humanity, like uh, puzzles that they do at Christmas time. Like this last one, literally involved. I because I had gotten into it the year before when it was the Twelve Days of Christmas. Uh, or is right. that what it was called? Either way, it was this big puzzle, and it took months for people to solve. And then the last year is the one they did. It was the Twelve Days or whatever of Kwanzaa. It actually yeah. involved solving. It involved you going out to this island in Maine and finding a physical treasure box that they had mm-hmm. there, like in the safe. And part of the puzzle was getting the combination to the safe throughout this thing. Like amazing. Like if that, it was something like this at the end of it, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately for me, my brain doesn't often have time to just go off on long bouts of trying to solve puzzles because I usually have a toy being thrown at me or a child screaming in my ear, breaking my concentration. But at the same time, that might make you the key puzzle solver because some people concentrate so hard, they just keep staring at the same thing and they overthink it. Well, that's never been the case with me. So You'll have this distraction, this thing comes, hits you in the face, and you're like, hey, why did you do Flying gravity aerodynamics, that's what fits into this puzzle. <laughs> you never know. Well, I mean, how about um, regular games without instead of just having to solve a puzzle, just like before you cheat? It's so, like Spelunky are, is a game that you play, right, Jeff? Yeah, and I played that thing for like probably a month, and I played several hundreds of hours or something like that of that game. And that game is extremely hard and you die all the freaking time. Yes. And uh, I wanted to see what the ending was like. So of course I ended up cheating and I, <clears throat> I beat the game and I'm thinking to myself, there's no way in heck would I would ever have beaten the game without cheating. No, define define cheating. You watched somebody on YouTube or something beat it, or you actually like downloaded the things that allow you to cheat and play it yourself to the end. Yeah, and basically I edited the code so I could beat the end. Oh, see, I had yeah. I had if you counted cheating, I had seen many people on YouTube because I used to watch that game a lot. Oh, yeah. I had seen how to end it. Completing it is a whole different thing because it's a roguelike with a random generation, you know, right. levels are randomly generated as you go in. So every game is not the same. Um, I've beaten it numerous times. I've put hundreds really? of hours. Oh, yeah, I put hundreds of hours into that game. I've got I still play that game on a daily daily level um, for the daily challenges all the time. I love that game. It's amazing. But yeah, I can't. I, there's no way I would have been able to <laughs> beat that game. It takes some skill. I do have to say myself. I don't have to. I, I give you credit. That game needs a lot of skill and patience. I don't have that. Kind I, lo- of I love that game. It's so fun. Um, but oh, okay. in, in general, and like for most games, let me think of cheating. So I just went through the new King's Quest game. Okay. King's Quest has come out with a new game. You know, so you Sierra's back and they're making things. And I got to tell you, it the, there was no hardcore puzzle solving that had to be done everything was relatively straightforward and you could pretty easily figure out what it was that you had to do there's a couple spots that stumped me for a minute but you always knew exactly where your goal was um i've played a lot of adventure games back in my day and i like to watch uh day nine do the stream of mostly walking i don't know if you've ever seen it they do an adventure game stream it's like three guys get together and they try to solve an adventure game and (laughs) to watch their frustration at some points because they play some some really good games and some poorly made games whereas they have no idea where they're going or what they're supposed to be doing and they're eventually just giving up and because the way the old adventure games used to work is you wouldn't know on earth if you were supposed to go do something until it was too late like it's possible they were written that way so i can say that i've cheated my way through some of those which unfortunately takes away the fun of figuring out for yourself but sometimes there's no other way to do it Logically, right, yeah, yeah. Well, I think King Quest Five was one of those where I I've never been in the game because I didn't know how to get past the snake, and 
Like you just end up wandering the desert until you die. Yes. And then those that and that one every once in a while you re, uh, run into that oasis area and you're like just randomly get it and you're like, is this something? Is this something? <laughs> And you just waste hours on that. Yes, I beat that game a few times. I also had the hymn book to that game, though. Oh, so when I got stuck back in the day, I could refer to the hymn book. Mm. Yeah, I remember those. I had some of those for the old school games. I think you had to pay, uh, at least for me, I had more patience when I was younger because I had no choice. Like, you play Contra oh, sure. over and over and over again because that's, like, one of the only games that you had. And you just played it until you beat it. Uh, that's not actually a puzzle game. But then uh, other puzzles. Games Contra's not a puzzle game. <laughs> but other games, I would like. You know, I'll get stuck and I'll just, you know, still just think about it and pl uh, keep playing until I could solve it. If I didn't mm -hmm. have a hint book. Now um, I just you know life catches up with you too at some point. Like as adult, I you just don't have time to devote to stuff like that like you used to. Well, that, that's why I like, it's funny because I'm on the completely opposite camp of Mark with Spelunky. Spelunky is a game that I don't have to think about too hard and I just can play it and relax and take some time away from my life and I don't walk away from it going, oh man, what could, what should I have done in this area? What could I do next time in this area? Because it's always different. So I just have fun and do it. Whereas you say it's too hard for you to, that you had to cheat to get to the end. I find that kind of... <laughs> Because, like, I always, like, you, you get to the final uh, stage, right? And it's really difficult to beat the boss. And I'm always, like, I don't have any ropes. I don't have any life. I'm just, like, I don't have any bombs. How the heck do you beat this thing? So. Fun, fun. I don't know. It depends on how your brain's wired, I guess. Like, I have a feeling I would smoke either one of you at any of the Madden games. So. Probably. <laughs> sure, I'm sure. Whenever I played any football game, and this tells you the uh, level of understanding that I have for football, I would just pick any random play. Because I, had, to me, they all meant the same thing. Like, okay, and try to pass. If I can pass, it's not a passing play. Okay, just run. Okay, well, hopefully this works out for me. Probably why I always lose, but... <laughs> See, I'd always get thrown off in those games. I, spent, I used to play them at my fraternity house a lot, and my <clears throat> fraternity brothers would make fun of me because they'd be like, I'd seriously be the quarterback, and I could not pay attention to enough areas on the screen to see my open receivers while right. I was trying to scramble in the backfield. And then I'd always be like, Jeff, that guy out there, he was like waving at you because he was so wide open. And like literally in the game, like they watched the replay, and he's like... You know, I mean, he's that wide open, but I'm in the busy in the backfield trying not to get tackled, and I throw it to the one guy who's, like, double covered. I think my eyes just were like, there's action happening up there. It must be one of my guys. And I just, like, throw it that way. I couldn't concentrate on enough areas of the screen to pull that off. So I would choose the Hail Mary play as much as I could. Oh, you do special teams on your first down <laughs> outside the field? Like, Always a fake punt, like, you know. <laughs> No, this football immediately popped into my head since it's back as of, mm -hmm. back as, as, of, Friday. as of yesterday, the, man. As of yesterday. Jeez. It, we talked about this earlier. It's already been a super long week. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yesterday. It was yeah. one really poor game, but it's a preseason game. I mean, what are you going to do? It's, uh... Yeah. Yeah. It was what it was. <laughs> None of the stuff. Is that uh, there's that joke where everybody's crying about that poor lion Cecil, but in Detroit, a li the lions always get killed. Yes. <laughs> yeah, these lions get killed every year, and nobody. <laughs> yeah, that made its way out here as well. <laughs> Actually, sent to me from one of my buddies in England. <laughs> How random is that? <laughs> oh man. All right, guys. What do we get? What else we got on the agenda here? Well, as I'm chewing on some ice, and I'm sure it's making a very lovely sound into the microphone. Um, Mike, I think you had something you wanted to bring up today. I did. I did. How about we play a little game let's, let's, for let's... one year anniversary? Which, by the way, had I had more time, I was gonna stop at a dollar store and get like a goofy party hat and a party <laughs> floor. Trying to see if I have anything around, and I do not, I unfortunately. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> so, so all right, we've, we've gathered some would-you-rather questions. Okay. 
we'll just kick those around. For those who are listening who don't know what Would You Rather is, basically, we will say a Would You Rather do X or X, and we have to choose. And it sounds they can't simple. both be X because that would be the same. Thing. That's true. <laughs> X, X or, a or B? X plus one. so for example this is kind of a softball question but we'll kick it around a little bit would you rather go the rest of your life with no cell phone or no internet oh no cell phone and i'm assuming that this is if i choose no cell phone i'll have the internet but if i choose no internet i can have a cell phone which does not have the internet on it correct okay Okay, I would definitely go no cell phone as well. I can I, well, okay, can I make calls uh, through Skype and stuff online? Well, that's true. You know what? You really don't even need a phone anymore. <laughs> right, and, that, and that's what I want. I want to, how much do I pick this thing apart? Or do we assume that there's no way to communicate except through, like, texting online, not actually physical communication with, like, speaking? Is that the route we're going with this? Like, no emails as well? Well, emails are different than well, cell phones. Yeah, emails though. you do on the internet. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, okay, but basically using internet as entertainment and whatever, and the cell phone would be more of a communications device. Oh, so, so you're saying take away all communications in general? Right. Well, I didn't break it down nearly that far, but yeah, that sounds good. Let's do that. <laughs> that'd be that'd be tough because, like, if I post a YouTube video up, do I get feedback on it, or can I never see anybody's comments? <laughs> Nobody would be able to respond. Or can they not? Can they not respond? Are they not allowed to? Because they can just go watch the video, and I have no well, idea can, if people like can. it or not. I you think should... I think I would still pick uh, life without a cell phone, even if I can c- communicate with anybody else. <laughs> Just like the, the shows that I watch on the internet, the uh, information that I get off the internet, I guess I would just rather just walk up to people and talk to them. I don't know if the shows that you want on the internet would, I guess they could still track statistics of who watches what, but they would have less ability to get an understanding of what people want to see unless it was people physically like within the realm of the Netflix people are all in one room. They're like, right. what do we think people want to see? Because we actually have no idea since they can't communicate with us. Um, right, right. What, should, what should we put out there? I think I'd rather have internet too. I, uh, and I don't really like carrying a cell phone most of the time anyway. <laughs> I don't want to be that connected. Um, I, you know, work calls me at inconvenient times and I just, yeah, get rid of my cell phone. I don't want a cell phone. See a cell phone. Well, I, I experienced oh, life without, without, without internet for like about a month. When I first moved mm-hmm. uh, here, um, my apartment didn't, wasn't connected to the internet. And for whatever reason, the, uh, Japanese uh, internet company just took like forever to install it. Like first I called them, try to set up a date. Then they had to call me to tell me that they were going to call me. I guess and that's, then... but if we gave up our cell phones just for internet, how would you get internet set up? You walk to you, the store. You couldn't call them to have all these setups yeah, happen. Walk, like it'd be, it'd be annoying because then you have to go. Well, you can like, even. How? Like, you don't have internet. Oh, you don't have the internet. <laughs> you do it from work. You, you Maybe you don't people. have a job, Mike. Well, come on. I, this would save the post office. <laughs> okay, Mike. Next question. I'm curious. All right. Well, does somebody else want to go, or you want me to keep going? Oh, you can do another one, uh, Mike. All right. Would you rather give up eating cheese or eating red meat? Cheese. Yep. Cheese. Man, this one's easy. Mike. Cheese is in like everything, though. But red meat is delicious. So is cheese. I could eat red meat over cheese all the time. You would never have a pizza yeah. again. Uh, it doesn't mean I would never have pizza again. I just would have it without cheese. With no cheese? I would That's... replace the cheese with red meat, so it would be a pepperoni and steak pizza. I thought this one was a horrible one. Oh, God. So what did you choose? I... Huh. I don't know. I really don't know on this one. I hate both options. I guess it would probably be cheese for me too, but it's way closer than you guys made it sound. Oh no, I made it quick, quick, easy. <clears throat> Forgot cheese doesn't even exist already. I don't even remember it. It's red meat all the way. <laughs> Delicious. Oh. Well here here's one for you of a food of variety that I came up with today. Would you rather eat for the rest of your life if you could only eat one thing? 
assuming you get it, let's say you have all the nutrients that you need from it and all that stuff. So that's out of the question. But your absolute favorite food, however, it always comes with a scabby Band-Aid on top of it. Or something you don't really like, but you can somewhat tolerate. And that's all you could ever have. So the scabby Band-Aid, it's just a Band-Aid on top of whatever the food is? It's somewhere within the food, maybe on top, maybe underneath. It changes every day. Yeah, if maybe, it's on top, know. I could just scrape yeah. a little bit off and be good to go. Yeah. And this is all you can eat. Like, so the one. only thing you could ever eat for the rest of your life. Well, then I'll do the one without the Band-Aid because after a while, they'll just be the same. Like, I, I, like I see your point. Food, you, you'll get you'll get bored of it eventually. That's so true. Get bored with one without a band aid. <clears throat> That's a good point. That's a good point. So yeah, I guess I would do that too. No scabby band aid. Okay, let's. I'm curious then, what if it was not just something that was bland and eh, but it was something you actually despised? Would you rather uh, deal? Well, with it? I think Mark's theory probably still holds true no matter how good the food is when you've eaten it for 612 days in a row it just tastes the same at that point see i think i'd go with the scabby band-aid if it was on top i think i would have too like if it was easy accessible and i could just dig out some food that's possibly contaminated i might have done the same i think i could just put it out of sight out of mind and wouldn't think about it until i had like (laughs) Well, yeah, yeah you say this until right. you eat, a, you finish a meal, and you're like, wait, where's the scabby band-aid? <laughs> and I'd be like, well, that was easier than digging the thing out. That's what I'll just have to do from now on. Well, and my thought, too, was, you know, I was unclear on whether or not the scabby band-aid could be contaminated with something. I, and it, I don't know. I never really said. I, got, I was going to, had you guys gone down that route, I was going to make something up and see how the thought process was, but we never well, had to get that. To was that was where my brain went, too. And then Mark had that other idea, and it seemed like a winner, winner at that point. All right. So this might end up being a really easy one. <clears throat> um, what would you rather have? Legalize all drugs, and I mean every single kind of drug that's possible, or to criminalize alcohol and tobacco. So, I mean, on one hand, you're actually really uh, improving the health of people's lives, but we're, we're basically going back to prohibition where alcohol, and now including tobacco, is illegal, or let all drugs be legalized, so like crack cocaine and uh all the really hardcore drugs are now accessible to anybody. I think I'm going to let Mike answer this because I think he's going to answer the exact same way I'm going to. Yeah, well, I think we talked about this or something similar on this show before. Um, It's kind of my general opinion that if somebody wants to destroy themselves bad enough, they're going to do it whether, you know, they find illegal drugs or, you know, what have you. That being said, this same person who's self-destructive can go to a store now and buy whatever kind of alcohol they want, you know? So, you know, it's sort of my belief that when you take out the criminal element of drug selling, like, I don't think it's such a bad situation. Um, All things being equal. Again, like I said, you can kill yourself with alcohol or you can kill yourself with heroin. Um, So I would legalize everything. I agree. I would legalize it all because I feel, I feel for one, it would, I think less people would do it than you think. I think there'd be an initial, initial surge and then it just like dropped back down. Yep. And since it wouldn't have a stigma on it anymore, people are going like, oh, like that's illegal. I can't have it. Now I want to try. People would be like, eh, whatever. It's something I In can fact, do. Alcohol would go way down and pot would go way up. I bet. I mean, I don't think that's happened out here in DC though. Granted, you I can't so. buy it any, I don't wait. Is it even legal in D.C.? I heard yeah. Congress. No, it's, it's legal in D.C. Um, it's been legal for a few months now. Yeah, oh. I don't think you can buy it. I can't remember if there's a dispensary around or not that you can buy it from here in D.C. or not. But, I mean, I'm not one that ever really got into pot too much. But, yeah, it's legal. Well, does that mean that there's no legal way to buy the drug? Because you're not paying taxes on it, so therefore it's still illegal, right? If there's no legal place to buy it? 
Uh, no, there's stipulations in how much you can have and how much you can actually. I think you can actually. I don't. I don't. I don't know all the details on it because I never really looked it up. But I know that is a good point. I do want to say though, however, for one, real quick, Mark, what would you think? Legalize I would it all. Say, uh, no, criminalize alcohol and tobacco. Criminalize alcohol and tobacco. You're gonna make mobsters selling alcohol again. <laughs> True. Probably. It'd be prohibition Probably. days at their finest. Give other people a job. I but I mean, maybe it will save a lot of lives from like alcohol related deaths and cancer related deaths. Oh, so I think they'll still find it though. I well, think it's super would. easy to grow tobacco in the South. But, right, but I mean, the access would limit the amount of people. Uh, okay, so Jeff, how about your turn? Give us I a. Thought, I thought I thought Mike had a good one. You thought I had a good I one. I thought you had a good one. You said. I got lots of them. Okay, yeah, yeah. Shoot one out there. All right. Would you rather? This one would be horrible. Would you rather have hiccups eternally or always feel like you have to sneeze? See, I will tell you, it definitely would not be hiccups because my last day before initially going up to the ICU, the, the last patient that I ever triaged in the emergency department was a guy who'd had hiccups for th three months. <laughs> and he looked like he wanted to kill himself. He was in the emergency department because he was seriously in my triage booth going, I can't take this anymore. And I was like, oh, dear God, like this guy really wants to die right now. So right. I'd rather want to sneeze for the rest of my life. End of story, because I've seen that situation. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, though, if you feel like you have to sneeze, you have basically the same effect. Like, you wouldn't be able to sleep very well. Right, it would be maddening, too. I At least think. you wouldn't have convulsions, though. Like, actually, hiccups make your body move. Yeah, the that's feeling true. of You're having to sneeze. Yeah. That is true. I think Jeff talked me into rather having to sneeze. Man, but that's a really bad feeling, too. Oh, that's still a really bad feeling, but that's the fun of Would You Rather. It's all about taking yeah, things that pain. yeah, that might be bad. So so let me, let me ask you this one, then. I'll, cl I'll close this out. Would you rather have a red-hot poker shoved in your eye or that same red-hot poker shoved up your pee hole? So. See, it's not always fun in games of what's a good thing to have. It's just a, what's the, the least worst thing to have. I feel like your eye probably doesn't have pain receptors. Okay. So if, I, if I had to choose one, I think that's where I'm going. But I'm just thinking... What would be worse, the life with a basically one eye, which is doable. You can still see, sure. Or having the poker basically destroy your penis. That I, doesn't sound I, like a good time. I can live with just one eye. <laughs> <laughs> I also would think about this from a different angle, though, and be like, a red hot poker in the pee hole. Might not destroy that. my penis to the point where it's not usable, and there's always plastic surgery that I might be able to fix that. Whereas if you shove a red hot poker through your eye, it's probably done for life. But we're in the future, Jeff. We'll probably have bionic <laughs> eyes, and you'll have a cool robot eye. Oh, yeah, you can do that whole 3D <laughs> printing thing, and you're good to go. Yes, yeah. but you can't see out of it with the 3D printing. It's just uh, there. Like, Ten years down the road, don't worry about it. See, my, Mike, I'm surprised at you only because of the fact that one of the biggest fears would probably be sterility after that. And, I mean, you already have a bunch of kids, so you'd probably be like, you know, I'd have to look at that as in, like, I still want to have kids, so that's something I would weigh on my mind. You were instantly like, nope, take my eye. Keep, yeah. my, <laughs> well, keep my penis intact. Well, in fairness, you know, when sterility was an issue for me, but I've done the surgery already, so. <laughs> so I mean, this could have just been a free version of that surgery. I've got that covered already. So, And by the way, that was not awesome either. So I know stuff down in that area isn't super pleasant. You should, you should use some Vaseline to help the patient. <laughs> no, no, I say baby powder. Throw some baby powder on it, it'll be fine. <laughs> Well, guys, happy one year anniversary. One year and many more to come, maybe. Woo. Woo. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Leave comments below. Thanks for watching, yes. guys. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>